Hey, hey, everybody, this is Larry. This is me going to Q3 of the weekly contest 384, Maximum Palindromes After Operations. Hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, join me on Discord. Let me know what you think about this one. So this one, it's, um, I actually like this problem. I think this is my favorite problem of the contest because it is the only problem that requires any thinking at all. The other ones are, uh, you know, like, I, may, I would say, okay, fine. I would say Q4, you could require some thinking. But that thinking was done uh, the last couple of contests. You do the same thing you do the last couple of contests, basically, right? So anyway, but this is the only interesting problem to, for me uh, for this problem uh, for this contest. And yeah, and it took me a little bit of time to be honest to kind of think about the properties. Um, but the idea here is that okay, you know, you could do the operation any number of times, and this is a very long way of saying you can swap any two characters from any string. Or any two strings, or even one string, really, right? Because uh, I don't think they limit it. Because I could, could you go to J? So then, basically, so so basically, now the first thing that I thought is that okay, well now you you put everything in a bag of like they just jumble them together. You if you like, could think of it visually. You put them all together in a huge bag, and then now what does that mean? That means that now you have, um, you know, you have. Uh, you have strings that are of length, of some lengths that you're trying to fill with palindromes, right? And of course, uh, in a greedy kind of way, at least that's the way that I do it. I, I, maybe you can, maybe it is looser than that. But the way that I thought about it in a greedy kind of way is that you always want to take the smallest strings first because then you can fill up easier, right? Because for example, here, um, it's easier to get a two character palindrome than a four character palindrome because it more characters in the future to fill out, right? And that's basically the idea. Um, I think the, and I don't know if the, this is unique to me or other people handle it differently. Um, there are a couple of edge cases that you have to be careful with the odd, num odd length strings and stuff like that. Um, you can handle them, but for me, I actually kind of just skipped it. Uh, and what I mean by that, we'll, we'll go over the code together. <laughs> um, yeah. I would also say that one thing that threw me off a little bit is the um, the n is equal to one thousand, but but um, yeah, I I don't think I I mean we'll go over the complex in a second, but I thought that maybe we have to do something n square, and that's the only thing that slowed me down was that I did not use n square in this way. Maybe they're being gen generous, but you know I don't know. That's why I kind of, I kind of uh, thought it was weird. But anyway, so here we have F is counter. So for each word, we kind of put them in a bag. And like I said, we collect all of them, right? F, of course, can have at most 26 characters or 26 unique characters because it's only lowercase. And S is just the length of, uh, contains the length of all the words. And then we sort them so that we get the, the smallest number in the beginning. And, and then the rest of them is just greedy. So, um, because we can use all the things interchangeably, and you can actually even handle this in a uh, kind of cleaner way um, if you really want to, and we'll talk about that in a sec. What I mean by that is just that you only care about the number of pairings, right? So, yeah, and with that, then you can actually simplify this a little bit, right? Um, because you can imagine you do something like, okay, let, let's talk about my solution first, and then maybe we'll play around with a quick optimization afterwards, right? Um, yeah, basically the way that I wrote it is very natural. It's basically, okay, length is the length of the current I. We just go from small to large. Uh, here, we, what this does is that it just converts an odd number to even number. The reason why we don't have to care about even number, oh, sorry, we don't have to care about the odd number. Um, mm -hmm. Like if you have five, that means that it is you want to create an odd palindrome. But... It doesn't matter what the extra character is, right? The extra middle character. We can just take it at the very end. Because we always have strings, that, or we always have, you know, because every character has to go somewhere. We'll just take one, whatever's left over, we can take it. And that's basically what this is saying. So we, if, if L is five, we'll just see how many fours that we can fit. And here we just go for order uh, alphabet. We go, okay, if there are at least two of these, we take, uh, the small, the even number of it again, same logic, right? Um, if there are five of these, we just take like four of them. Um, and then we take the min of either L or D. So that takes an even number of pairs. And then we just subtract them from both. And then at the very end, if we 
do not need any more characters we add total by one and that's pretty much it right so this is o of n this is o of uh, alpha where alpha is the size of the alphabet so this is just o of n times alpha um this is going to be n log n because of the sorting by uh thing but yeah right and what and you know now looking at it like i said um this is still a little bit you know um yeah, you can still uh, optimize it a little bit more uh, in cleanliness. I mean, this is kind of how I would think about it in terms of... Um, hmm. This is how I would think about it in terms of... Um, this is how we think about it in terms of how we set it and how we set it up and stuff. But you can actually even optimize this a little bit more, right? For example, here we can see that at the way n, right, for do, 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 for um, k and I don't know, f of keys, right? We can even just do something like pairs is equal to zero, um, f of k divided by two. Oops. So this is just like the number of total pairs that we have. And then now, we don't even need all this, right? So we can just do, 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 right? So maybe use is equal to pairs times two, min of pairs times two, L, right? And then L subtract from U, pairs um, subtract from U divided by two, and that's pretty much it. Same same idea as before, but now we don't, uh, the sim simplifying thing is just saying that, uh, now we don't even care what the characters are, right? We just care about the number of pairs of characters. And of course, you can clean this up a little bit if you really like, but that's basically the idea. Um, yeah, still n log n dominated by this thing, but so yeah. Um, that's all I have for this one. Let me know what you think. It is very interesting. It is very greedy, very, uh, yeah, very fun to think about, to be honest. So yeah, um, that's all I have for this one. Let me know what you think, and you can watch me solve a live in contest now. All right, let's skip to Q3. I, I didn't actually read it. Just double bombs so I can focus. Okay. Words. Okay. Hmm. Maybe a hard one. I don't know. strategy I don't know how to do this one huh. do any number of times
Like that, yeah, it like a ASCII lowercase. Yeah, I always forget to do actually focus on uh, thanks for watching hit the like button hit the subscribe button join me on discord let me know what you think about this problem this explanation this contest everything in between stay good stay healthy to your mental health i'll see y'all later take care bye bye